Good evening, cryptid lovers of the interwebs. My name is Alexa, and I'm the resident ooky spooky girly around here. Not gonna lie to you folks, today's video research was pretty scary for me. I grew up being a big swimmer. Heck, my nickname was Water Baby for a while. But the thought of what's lurking in the lakes that I don't know about is pretty scary. Let me know in the comments if y'all have ever experienced anything worse than, you know, leeches. And here are the top five unsettling rivers hiding terrifying monsters. In fifth place, we have Loch Ness. So Loch Ness is a large freshwater loch in the Scottish Highlands that extends for approximately 37 kilometers southwest of Inverness. It takes its name from the River Ness, which flows from the northern end and is one of a series of interconnected murky bodies of water in Scotland. Its water visibility is exceptionally low due to a high peat content in the surrounding soil. The southern end connects to the Loch Oi by the River Oik and a section of the Caledonian Canal. The northern end connects to Loch Dogfor via the River Ness, which ultimately leads to the North Sea via the Moray Firth. Loch Ness is the second largest Scottish loch by surface area after Loch Lomond, but due to its great depth, it is the largest by volume in Great Britain. Its deepest point is 230 meters, making it the second deepest loch in Scotland after Loch Morar. It contains more water than all the lakes in England and Wales combined, and is the largest body of water in the Great Glen, which runs from Inverness in the north to Fort William in the south. Its surface is about 16 meters above sea level, and it contains a single artificial island named Cherry Island at the southwestern end. There are nine villages around the loch, as well as Urquhart Castle, the village of Drumnadokit, contains a Loch Ness Center and exhibition. Now, Loch Ness is best known for claim sightings of the cryptozoological Loch Ness Monster, also known affectionately as Nessie. Our darling deer is often described as a large, long-necked, and with, you know, one or more humps protruding from the water. Popular interest and belief has varied since it was brought to worldwide attention in 1933. Evidence of its existence is, you know, there's plenty of evidence out there with lots of photos and sonar readings. Count me in as one of the folks who believe in Nessie. I feel like I learned about her and Bigfoot in elementary school, and they're out there for sure. They just like to keep to themselves, and honestly, I respect that. In fourth place, we have Payette Lake. Payette Lake is a natural lake in the western United States, located in west central Idaho at McCall. Formed by glacial activity, it is situated in the upper drainage basin of the Payette River, which drains into the Snake River. Nope, don't want to go there. Outflow from the lake is at its southwest corner, you know, it's regulated for irrigation purposes by a small dam, which was completed in 1943. The lake's surface area and volume, excluding the islands of course, are around 7.9 square miles and 0.18 cubic miles, respectively. So the maximum depths are 304 feet and the shoreline length is about 22 miles. The principal outlet is the North Fork of the Payette River. The lake receives drainage from 144 square miles of heavily forested mountainous terrain. And further south, the North Fork flows into Lake Cascade, which is the reservoir behind the Cascade Dam. Now that that's out of the way. Time for the good stuff. The lake is no stranger to lake monster legends, having long been associated with a creature known as Charlie. The aquatic cryptid was first documented in the 1920s and has been described as snake-like, with a dinosaur-like head, large jaws, humps like a camel, and skin that is hard like a shell. The first reference to the sea serpent may have been the belief of indigenous legends, predating western settlement of the area that an evil spirit dwelled in the lake. The first documented sighting by western settlers occurred in 1920, when workers cutting ties at the upper end of the lake thought they saw a log in the lake, until the log began to move and uh, scared the tar out of them. In August of 1944, the serpent was reportedly seen by several groups of people who described it as 30 to 35 feet in length. In September of 1946, the serpent was reportedly sighted by a group of 20 people. Dr. G.A. Taylor of Nampa, Idaho explained that it appeared to be possibly 3 to 40 feet long and seemed to be diving into the water, leaving a wake similar to one left behind by a small motorboat. In 1954, a Boone McCallum, editor of the Star News, held a contest to name the serpent, which is how Shirley you know, came to get her moniker. Charlie was reportedly sighted dozens of times between 1956 and the last documented sighting in 1997, but recent visitors to the lake have filmed the moment something unusual showed up in the water. I'll let the video play now so y'all can see it as well. There was clearly something in the water, and a stream of bubbles reaching the surface was observed, but the creature remained hidden the whole time. Hey, let Charlie have her privacy. Obviously, she's just a big introvert, and as an extrovert who has, you know, adopted a number of introverted friends, you just have to let them have their cave. Trust me. In third place, we have Racetown Lake. So Racetown Lake is a man-made reservoir in Huntington County, Pennsylvania. That is also the largest lake that is entirely within. Pennsylvania. The original lake was built by the Simpson family of Huntington as a hydroelectric project, while the current 8,300-acre lake was completed in 1973 by the Army Corps of Engineers. Racetown is around 200 feet deep in the deepest area near the dam. This lake is home to a large water creature that locals have dubbed Raystown Ray. The first recorded sighting of Ray actually occurred in 1962 at Old Raystown Dam. So this creature actually predates the modern version of the lake. Old photos show a large shadowy figure just below the surface. Local 
boaters have described experiencing sudden water turbulence and spottings of a larger water creature ever since. In 2006, the managing director of the lake talked openly about how while Ray is a bit of a recluse, he likes to make an appearance every April, comparing him to the famous groundhog, Punxsutawney Phil. Fun fact, marine biologists have established for certain that this creature is a vegetarian, since there is no evidence of it consuming large amounts of fish, geese, otters, or ducks. My kind of cryptid. When I was doing my research today, I found a witness statement from a man claiming to be a local to the area, who described in great detail what he saw on the lake when he was out fishing with his son. He described it as a large, thick black snake with a huge head that bobbed in and out of the water. He moved a little closer, but his son was getting scared, so he cut the motor and just looked through his binoculars. The body was moving in like coils or humps up and down in the water. The creature had no fins like a fish, and the head was diamond shaped. The weirdest feature was that the eyes, which were dark, somewhat small and slanted, were not set on the side of the head, but placed forward. He apparently got an excellent look through the binoculars when it raised up, and its head moved from side to side. Aw, kinda like a puppy. The creature never made a sound, and the man described it as around 20 feet in length. The duo observed the creature for about two to three minutes until it slipped under the surface. Now, the son's description was very similar to his father's, but he said he noticed lighter colored whiskers or rays on the chin and face while looking through the binoculars. The man had tried to take a picture with his cell phone, but the ray just sort of blended in with the water. Okie dokie, so if I ever want to visit Pennsylvania, go in April. Note it. In second place, we have Devil's Lake. Devil's Lake is an eerie, mist shrouded body of brackish water located north of Lincoln City, Oregon. Carved by glaciers during the last ice age, this lake was originally named to the native Matawakan, which roughly translates as Mystery or Bad Spirit Lake. One of the earliest legends involving the creature of Devil's Lake revolves around an indigenous chief who assembled an expedition of young warriors to go on a late night hunting trip on the Fonda Fertile Lands across the lake. The full moon reflected off of the night darkened waters as the young men and their leaders slipped the canoe into the water and began their late night trek. Suddenly, a flurry of tentacles ripped through the surf, capsizing the canoe and pulling the thrashing, terrified men beneath the churning water. Although no one survived this ill-fated expedition, their screams alerted those still on shore, who rushed onto the beach and were able to bear witness to this horrific event in grisly detail due to the uh, moon's lingering glow. The surviving warriors, in order to pay homage to their fallen brethren, as well as appease what they believed to be the demon of the lake, held a festival every year, during which gifts and animal sacrifices were thrown into the water. The tradition continues to this day, although nowadays the annual event is treated more along the lines of like an annual picnic that celebrates tribal legends and traditions. This creature has since been dubbed the Devil's Lake Monster. Yeah, no cutesy names here. In 1915, a duo of allegedly well-known businessmen saw the serpent very distinctly at around a quarter of a mile from shore. It was described as between 50 and 60 feet long and about a foot or two feet in diameter. The last time the monster was seen was a couple years ago by a Reverend C. L. Wallace. At that time, it was on the extreme east end of the lake. All Alrighty, so this is one cryptid I don't need to visit, thanks. I'll stick with the um, happy herbivores. In first place, we have Bear Lake. Bear Lake is a natural freshwater lake on the Idaho-Utah border in the western United States. At about 109 square miles in size, it is split about equally between the two states. The lake has been called the Caribbean of the Rockies for its unique turquoise blue color, and its water properties have led to the evolution of several unique species of fauna that occur only within the lake. It's over 250,000 years old, and apparently the surrounding valley has a reputation for having high quality raspberries, but I know that's not what y'all want to hear about. Pardon me, fruit's expensive. The Bear Lake Monster was first reported in articles written in the 19th century by Joseph C. Rich, a Mormon colonizer in the area, determined to report secondhand accounts of sightings of the creature. In recent years, the monster is considered to be a tourist attraction, with the last official reported sighting of the monster being in 2007. Now you might be asking, okay, sure Alexa, that's all fine and dandy, but why is this the scariest if it hasn't been spotted in a while? For starters, it's in Utah. Oh, that doesn't qualify is scary? Okay, well allow me to quote from one of the first spottings of the beast. The bear lake monster, a combination of dragon, bear, and fish, measuring 20 feet in length and possessing the roar of a lion, made its appearance on the lake front a few nights ago and um, killed a horse tied near a campfire. The owners fired a number of shots at the peculiar looking dragon without effective results. Oh, that's not enough. Alrighty, take this. Several years before that incident, the prehistoric leviathan made its appearance at the lake quite frequently and the people of that valley were in a continuous state of terror as a result. Camping parties on the lake were few and far between, and people around the lake were afraid to go to sleep at night for fear of having their homes and themselves eaten up by this ferocious monster of the big lake. One gentleman, a Mr. Fred Mooney, watched the terror one night as it sank into the water for a second and then came out again. The lake was calm otherwise, and if it hadn't been for the creature moving closer and closer to the shore, the man would have written it off as like a gasoline launch or some other vessel. He grabbed his 3030 and fired at it. 
but couldn't hit him. And this creature turned towards Fred and his camping group. The horses nearby were very frightened, one of which broke loose. The humans of the group stepped back into the trees a few feet and fired, and the beast let out a growl that scared the whole group and made its way towards shore. The man ran up the nearby hill to shoot as rapidly as possible, but with every single one, it seemed to get more strength and growl more devilishly. The men spotted the runaway horse near the campfire and rushed to restrain him when the ugly monster raised his front paw and struck the horse to the ground, grabbing the horse with his two front paws, opening its monstrous mouth and crashed its teeth into it like a bull terrier would a mouse. After tearing the horse badly, he made an awful howl and then was gone, plowing through the water. It seemed to be all head, with two large staring eyes as large as a front wagon wheel, nose and mouth like a great large fish. Its arms seemed to come out on either side of its head, where the ears naturally would be. The hind legs were long and bent like that of a kangaroo, and the rear end was like the tip end of a monster fish. I don't know about y'all, but that's, um, terrifying. It's also the only monster on this list who has been spotted reaching the shore, and the thought of that is already giving me nightmares. And that brings us to the end of our time, and I'm a little hesitant now to jump in a lake ever again without doing thorough research. Leeches were traumatizing enough for me as a kid. Let me know in the comments what you thought of today's video. And hey, while you're there, could you like give us a like, maybe subscribe if you aren't already? And hey, why not hit the bell for more from us here at Top 5 Scary Videos, and I'll see y'all next time, you lovely spooky people.